welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And in today's video, we are going to be creating our own global coordinate system for odometry. So now let's get started right away because we got a lot to get through. So the first thing I want to point out is that we're going to implement Runnable because we want this program to be runnable within the other programs. And that will kind of make sense later when we override the public void run. And yeah, I've already declared all the variables because that takes a while to, or that will just take up time to declare and I want to kind of keep this video short. Is running has to do with the runnable, we'll see that later. We want to get our, we're just going to define our encoder positions right away. We got the change in orientation. And then just like the PID tutorial, we got the old positions as well because we're going to keep constantly updating the new position and saving the old position. Then we got our global positions and the one for the robot orientation as well. And then we got these two variables here that we're going to derive from the text files that we derived in the uh, calibration video. We also have the sleep time and that's going to show up a little later as well. So now this is our constructor that we got to start out in. We learned about constructors a little earlier in this tutorial series, I'm not sure which video right away, but let's start by looking at what it's intaking. It's intaking each of the encoders, it's also intaking the ticks per inch and the, I called it thread sleep delay. And that is very important now. We have to redefine the encoders and we're going to use it using the this command so that it belongs to this class but still is initialized from the other class. We're going to do this dot left encoder and that's just going to equal r left encoder, or the, the one from our op mode. And then we got to do that for each of our encoders. All right, so now we've defined sleep time, so let's redefine sleep time as our thread sleep delay. Now we got to derive something from our text files here. So let's do encoder wheel distance. We got to go in and derive our text files. So this is done in a very specific way. It's double. We're going to parse this double. And we're going to read a written file. Dot read file. And this is going to be the What's the file name? Oh, side wheel distance separation file. And let's trim that. And then we're going to multiply that by ticks per inch. And we'll see why that is important a little later. Now we also have to do the middle encoder tick offset. I declared up there. And that's going to be the same thing but we're not going to multiply it by ticks per inch, per se. And we still got to trim it. And our semicolon. All right. So now we're done in this constructor. Let's create our position update void here. So now, the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to start out by getting the encoder positions. And we're just going to go through left encoder dot get current position for all of our encoders. Why is this being so weird? Okay. There was an update for Android Studio and I kind of don't like it, honestly, but... Now let's do our change from the previous one. We're going to declare our double. And this is going to constantly be looped, so this is going to be updated. We don't have to put in the while loop in here. So this is going to be the left encoder position minus the old left encoder position. And then we have to do the same for the right.
just like that. Now let's get our change in orientation. We gotta override that. And that is going to equal our left change minus the right change. And we're not gonna put that in absolute value because of the way that we're going. So this matters right now, whereas in the calibration, it did not matter. And we're going to divide this by the encoder wheel distance. And then we're going to go robot orientation. And we're going to do plus equals because we want to keep adding on to the robot orientation. That's going to be the change in orientation to get the current robot orientation. Continuing on, let's get our middle encoder position. That's going to equal the middle encoder dot get current position like such. And then let's get our let's start out by getting a raw horizontal change. This I think is honestly easier than just creating one variable and you'll see why a little later or actually in the next step and we're going to subtract that from the old one just like we did up there now we're going to create a new double and this is going to be the horizontal change and that has to do with our middle encoder because of where it is located as we learned in the um, calibration video raw horizontal change we subtract that from uh, this thing the change in orientation times the middle encoder take offset like that. Now we got to get our sides. I just call this variable sides. And that is the essentially our position. It's going to be right change. Wait, I don't need this second parenthesis. Right change plus left change, as I declared earlier. And that is going to be, we're going to divide it by two because we're essentially getting the average of the two. And then double, I called it, I like to call this one front back. And that's just going to equal our horizontal change. Now it's going to say that this is redundant. And I wanted to create new variables because we're updating our global position. And I think it's easier for you to see with separate variables rather than just creating something based on this here that we just previously did without the new variables. I think the new variables make sense. We've got to update our global x's or our global positions. I'm going to start with global x. We're going to go sides and that's going to be times sine, uh, the sine of our robot orientation and that's going to be plus front back times the cosine of the robot orientation. So here's just basically, it's basically this math is just some trigonometry. And this one's going to be cosine. This one's going to be sine of the robot orientation. Okay. And this is not very hard trigonometry to figure out. I'm not going to go in and explain it because it would probably take me a while to explain it. And we're already a decent amount into the video. Right now, let's just update our old positions. Start with left.
and there this is this void is going to be constantly looping we'll see that when we get here to run but we got to create some more doubles that are going to be accessed by our um, actual program that we're running this on because we're not done yet this coordinate system that we created essentially means nothing yet so I'm gonna call this return x coordinate and it is going to just return our global x and we got to do the same for and make sure these are public it matters We got to do the same for our y coordinate and we're going to return our global y and we also got to do the same for our orientation i'm just going to call that return orientation and that is going to return and our orientation is currently in radians, actually, so we got to, to convert that to degrees. Robot orientation. And we're going to remainder divide that by 360. And the rem that symbol means remainder division. And we're going to... I gotta put a semicolon there. And we're going to want to do that because 360 or the radians when we convert them it's not exactly perfect and we want to get the remainder of that so that's why we would do that there last thing we got to do actually we can't go in there yet we got to do one more thing we got to create another void this is called stop and that occurs when is running equals false. Okay, now we can go in here. And I forgot to put semicolons here. Oops. So now we're going to go into the run void. And this is how we're going to loop our thing. Our, um, this one here, whatever it was called, position update, rather than putting a while loop inside of there. This is more effective and allows you to stop it quicker because we can't access op modus active in this class here. So let's go while is running. And inside of here, we're going to do position update. And then we're going to do a try and catch here. So we're going to try to get Thread dot sleep, and that's going to be the sleep time. And if we cannot get that, we are going to catch our interrupted exception. I'm just going to call it E for exception, and then that's going to be E dot print stack trace. And then you don't have to necessarily understand how this works. I don't think there's any point in you, for odometry for you understanding why this works. That's beyond what this video needs to cover. But all we need to know about this run void is that it's going to constantly keep updating the position. And in the next video, we're going to see how to access this in our programs. So from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.